So how you doing? I thought you guys might enjoy a very basic kind of video, kind of explaining how the engine works and some of the things you hear us talk about when we're building saws. So today I'm going to do a video on the blowdown and I think I might do the exhaust as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty. Alrighty. So let's talk about the exhaust versus the transfers. Uh, you could have two transfers on either side. Uh, some even have three, but I'm just drawing one. Um, you'll just have to use your imagination here, all right? Now, what I want to talk about is this. This is the distance from the time the exhaust opens to the time the transfer opens. Okay, it's, we call it blowdown. Basically, this is the amount of time you have for your exhaust gases to escape before the opening of the transfers. Now, below here is your crankcase. This is down on the bottom. Um, so when the saw is running, it's not unusual to see around five PSI in your crankcase. Um, and if your exhaust, before it opens, uh, let's say you have a thousand PSI. Uh, it could be more, it could be less. Um, we're kind of using our imagination here. You know what I mean. But basically in your blowdown time, you have to get your exhaust gases down to a point that when the transfer opens, the five PSI is enough to start feeding your new charge up the transfers. All right, this is the moment it starts. So in your combustion chamber, if you don't bring the pressure down to a level less than crankcase pressure, at the moment these transfers open, they will essentially be delayed with their flow. So what you see a lot of us doing is adjusting the amount of time we have here in order to help the uh, exhaust gas pressure to get down to a point that this will start immediately. And that's why we're adjusting our blowdown. All right. So if we take it from say 20 to 25 degrees, we're giving it more time for these exhaust gases to get out before our crankcase pressure takes over and starts feeding. So there's things you can do. You don't necessarily have to raise the exhaust to help bring the exhaust pressure down. You can widen it. Now, one thing I wanna specify here is whenever I say widen it, I'm talking about something like this typically. All right. So a lot of people will misunderstand and think widening it in the centers and I'm not, I'm talking towards the top here. You see, say this is our combustion chamber over here. Okay. And say the piston is right here. Your exhaust port is here and your transfers will be here. This is bottom dead center, okay? The, your transfers should be flowing at the, the same time your exhaust is open. Let me draw two of them here just to help. Now, in this time period right here, in your blowdown time period, hopefully you're achieving Hopefully you're getting enough exhaust gases out your exhaust port here 
to allow your transfers to flow immediately. Now, another thing you can do is work at changing the upper portion of your transfers to help their, them flow. See, if this is your exhaust, you typically want your transfers to push out the opposite side, all right? And this is to allow the charge to hit the back of the cylinder and help swoop up and push it down, okay? The reason is the distance from the time your transfer is open till you get the bottom dead center, which is usually, you know, down here somewhere. Um, this is the amount of time your transfers will work to help push the new charge in. But as the new charge comes in, they are also pushing out what's left over up here. Um, so you'll see guys work on the upper transfers. They will do things. They will help. They will do things like uh, change the angles and uh, all sorts of things to help, to try and help assist this process. Uh, it's called scavenging. Okay. Your spark plug's here. So the goal is to get your transfers to flow out, push your exhaust gases out the exhaust. Now you will lose some of your good charge out the exhaust. It will happen. Now things you do, now the part of the reason you see us talk about mufflers a lot and modifying mufflers is because so let me draw you another picture here. Um, this is a cylinder. This time we're gonna draw the exhaust out this side, but here is our muffler, okay? We'll put the piston down here at bottom dead center. Here's another spark plug for you. Now we play with the muffler a lot. That's because the muffler has to be able to release all of these gases into the muffler, silence it, and push it out the port, okay? We'll say our port right here. But the best mufflers will build pressure in this time. You see, as your exhaust gases are burning and escaping, they're expanding. They will, you know, kind of grow get larger. Now some of the exhaust gas will escape immediately, but the, the whole idea here is to get the muffler to build enough pressure to shut down. If you look up here, remember me seeing about how some of your good charge will escape? See, the whole idea is to build enough pressure here to shut down this escape before, as the, the uh, piston is coming back up and closes off the exhaust. Let me change the, put the page here on you. Now, let me talk about an exhaust port. We're gonna draw a nice big exhaust port here. Nice big circle, right? Now you will see different shapes, different heights, all that stuff affect each salt differently. Let me go back let me show you why. They affect each salt differently because of, you know, peak power is determined by the relationship between the transfer and the exhaust port. So if your transfers are shooting it a little lower in the cylinder, you know, a different shape might help it perform better. Where if they're shooting higher in the cylinder, another shape might help it. And you got to Part of the fun that we have with building saws is playing with the transfers and the exhaust ports to kind of find where peak power is going to be. And as you get good, you can start tuning it spe specifically for peak power at different RPMs and so forth. So eventually you learn how to adjust peak power 
through your transfers and your exhaust because some adjustments will affect it some ways some adjustments will affect it another way um, all every saw is different and you end up building you know several of the same saw trying different things until you find exactly what you like Now let me get back over here to a nice new exhaust. So when we're raising the exhaust, so say we take this exhaust and we raise it up to here, okay? And then let's say we do this number. This is how I did my 925, okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now, I think I made a mistake with this. Let me explain. So this was the way the exhaust port shaped before, and this is what I changed it to. So what I did is I brought peak RPM up to a point up here, but the problem I'm running into is peak power is still down in this region. So now what I have is a, a large distance between where the peak power is and the peak RPM of a saw is. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So when these points get really close, you have a saw that will four stroke on, as it gets higher in the RPM, a lot easier, but it will create more torque. So like Tasman saw, uh, this is the way his saw is built. The peak power is very close to peak RPM. And he's about to learn that as he leans it out, he's going to notice his RPMs are not increasing. That's because peak RPM is built to be very close to peak power. And I did that to help the torque of the saw. Okay. Now... One thing you can do is instead of taking it up to here, you can do something else. Split it in half. But instead of doing this, you do this. So if you look at the amount of volume I've reduced in this area, or I've, you know what I mean? So if you look at the amount of volume I removed during this build, Versus if I would have taken it out here, what's the difference? Probably about the same. And because the exhaust port is closed longer, I would increase torque. But I'd be willing to bet my RPM would be about the same. And my peak power would then be closer to peak RPM. This would essentially probably turn that saw into a torquier saw. Um, this is probably one of the things I'm going to have to do to that saw to make it where I like it. Now, you remember me telling you about widening it at the tops. Um, some people will try to widen at the sides. The reason I don't do that is because if you remember the transfers here, Okay, this is the moment the transfer is open. So at this moment, as the piston's coming down through the port, you essentially have five PSI or less in the combustion chamber. So from this point on, it's your transfers that are doing the work to push the exhaust gases out the exhaust. And from this point on, typically your transfers are what help, you know, determine whatever power you gain on the lower half. And since it's a little more important not to lose all your fuel out your exhaust port, um, I typically do not adjust the bottom half. I leave them where they are because I don't want all that good fuel all that good charge to start escaping out the exhaust port. So I typically only adjust the top portion. And that's why I get this shape. Again, this is how I do it. 
This is how I look at it. And this is how I read it. Um, different people will have different opinions and different, you know, things they figured out and whatever. But this is just how I look at it. And I thought you guys would kind of like this little video. So that's about as basic, I think, as I could make it. Um, I hope it helped you understand a little bit more about what we're doing and, you know, what we're tweaking on these saws. Um, let me know if you'd like more. Uh, just post a comment and tell me, you know, maybe you make some suggestions of different things you'd like explained. And, you know, we'll do a series of videos of me drawing bad pictures and trying to explain things in a very simplified way. Um, if you want to get real technical, you might want to talk to somebody like the Iron Horse or Charles Briscoe knows a lot too. Um, I find these guys, you know, they're, they're really good at using the proper words and I am not. So I try not to venture into those very technical videos. I try to keep it simplified. I'll let those technical ones, you know, for the other guys. And I think the Iron Horse, he, he's, he'll, he'd look at this video and be able to just keep running with it, you know? The Iron Horse would be able to get into, you know, talking about things like the bore, the stroke, you know, and how that plays in and all that stuff. So I think that's a, a video better for somebody like him, you know? He has more experience. He'd, he'd be able to uh, get into the details a little more, so... Maybe you can go over there and start posting comments on his videos to uh, see if you can get him to explain it a little better. You know, that might help. <laughs> uh, see if he, you know, you know what I mean? Say, hey, I saw one of Smitty's videos and uh, he was talking about the blowdown and stuff. Would you mind getting a little more detailed uh, to see what he's talking about? <laughs> It'd be kind of funny if he posted a video. I would like to see him post a, a video on that. I don't know. I, I would learn something, you know? But, uh, hey, if you liked it, let me know. And we'll work at making more. Uh, maybe throw some suggestions down there, some subjects I can talk about. And we'll see what we can do. Alrighty. Hey, catch you in the next one. Later.